All right, welcome back to Off the Tap. This week is episode 24, and we're doing New Belgium Brewing's Fat Tire. Ooh, a, that, that was, was nice. a fancy bottle over. I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's a, it's a fat, juicy beer that we're about to drink here. Hey, Sean, is that the bottle opener that Maddie has that has one of Randall's favorite brands on it? It, does, it is, yeah. What What is it? Chubby's? Yeah, yeah. she's got a Chubby's, Chubby's, bottle, Chubby's opener. bottle opener. Oh, yeah, she showed me that. I'm pretty displeased that she has one, and I don't. I, n I know. <laughs> That's okay. This is really good. I've seen this in the store multiple times and just never gotten it. I wish I would have gotten it before. I've just heard of it before. Like, I've heard of people getting it. Like, I think in Colorado, someone was drinking a fat tire or something. One of my friends Maybe. In I don't even know if that... Is that where the new Belgian brewing company is? Is that where it's yeah, at? Well, I can't look. We can't. Don't look yet, Sean. You might. We might see something you don't want to see. Well, it says established 1991, Colorado. That's all it says. Oh, it does say Colorado. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says Colorado right on the front, but I didn't know if. Uh, I don't. I didn't know why if there was a significance I, or not. But yeah, it's I love good. this beer. I love the aftertaste. Yeah, it, it's really it hangs, good. And it's good. It's an amber ale. That's what it says on the, uh, the can as well. We all have bottles, but I have a picture of the can pulled up. Don't judge me. Really good. Could not find a can anywhere. I like it. Yeah. No, me either. The bottles are weird shaped, though. We were talking about that before we started. They're kind of tall. It's got a, tall it's got a long neck. <laughs> Dude, I haven't had a bad beer in a while on this podcast. Yeah, no. It's we haven't. Since Helicella. <laughs> yeah. That was really pretty much that is Miller High Life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? Roughly. Oh, was it directly before it? No, no, no. I just the bad one before oh. that. And the Miller High Life wasn't horrible. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna yeah. be. <laughs> it was better than I anticipated based on, you know, friend and family at ratings or, or whatever they had to say about opinions. Yeah. But it was pretty good. Um pretty simple design. We got the, like the, the navy blue on the top, separated by a little or with with red on the bottom was separated by a little gold line. It's very yeah, that's like some, that's some high class colors. You know what I mean? It is. It's very like sail sailboat colory. Yes, yeah. and design like hit, style, when, like the lettering and everything. Yeah, it is. Except yeah, it very for, much reminds me of a sailboat. Yeah, the only thing that it doesn't remind me of a sailboat is the fact that it's called Fat Tire. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, you got to get your you got to get your your sailboat to the water somehow. You know, hmm. on a trailer with some big old fat tires on it. Fair. That's right. There's a bike on the on the little emblem that says Colorado though yeah a nice Maybe bike I think, that's like a a... I think that's a Schwinn it might Sean, be I a just Schwinn. noticed you, you you must have a real nice camera what oh, camera yeah. do you have it's high quality it costs $60 yeah. at Best Buy it's, it, it, well, it, looks <laughs> high, it looks high quality uh, and there's no lag so you've got great Wi-Fi I do that's Hard more wired. expensive than the camera <laughs> hardwired brother mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole different game whenever you hardwire your stuff I, so well, I my, 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 my work computer is hardwired right now into um, my router the hard in, the, in the closet, but it's it's across the whole floor of the apartment, so I have to go to work and pick up an adapter, which, by the way, I need to do tomorrow. Well, I'm glad I reminded myself. <laughs> wow. All right, it's time for the Do You Know Your ABVs. Who goes first this time? Should Sean go first since he won last week? We should make so the winner of the previous week go first. All right. Uh, it four point seven. Okay. Four point seven. Yeah. Going a little lower on it. Yeah. Andrew, you said six five. I just wanted to say my height, but <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I think I'm I'm gonna invert it though and do five six. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't Anywhere know. between there, Randall. Yeah, I'm gonna go in between for sure, but uh, I can't really. I don't. I can't really tell by the taste how uh, how much it's gonna be. It doesn't feel like it's got a lot of alcohol in it. It doesn't feel like a lot, but oh no, I'll go five point two. You nailed it. Is really? It five two? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I yeah. just checked. I didn't. I didn't check before. I just checked. But I saw wow. you. Uh, nice. Okay, everyone drinks. Yeah, I'm about to get sloshed, dude. I got it, got it right on the right on the head. You know, I had to. We got to celebrate. 
I think if you get it right on, you have to finish your drink. That should be the rule. Sounds like a horrible oh idea. My God. <laughs> it sounds like an absolutely horrible idea. Well, it actually sounds like a great idea if we're trying to get smashed. Which, I mean, you know. You shotgun a glass bottle. I don't see why, why not? not. No, you got to do the tornado thing. Do you know how to do the tornado thing? I could probably figure it out. Yeah. I got you. I want to try. I want to try it. Um, before we get into the rate, the initial ratings for this one, I need to uh, apologize for my rating for last week. Uh, oh, yeah. I rated that summer pills way too low. You scuffed that one, dude. Um, yeah. It's definitely still not my favorite Pilsner, but it's way too good of a beer to, for me to, to have rated it a 6.4, and I apologize. Yeah, that, was, that was a little rude. Uh, yeah. We finished recording that podcast, and I felt absolutely horrible for the, for the past week, literally, because I had... Two more of them, um, as the three more of them after a couple days later, and I was just like, "Man, this is such a good beer." So I'm definitely gonna put it up in the eight. So I'm gonna give last week's summer pills the uh, a six or eight point two. Well, I would okay. I, I would also like to apologize for last week for going into excessive detail about me shitting <laughs> okay. my apartment. Okay, we're going back. We're back on. I have All right, regrets. No reg- no regrets. Not even one letter. <laughs> um, all right. Initial rating. How are y'all feeling about it so far? I mean, you know, a couple drinks in. It's pretty good flavor. I like the aftertaste. Let me take another sip. Dude, I, I feel like this is, a, to me, this beer screams like, if I'm at a high-class bar in the city, I could be drinking this beer because it, it tastes classy. It looks you know I mean? classy too. The, I mean, the design looks classy. It just tastes really well. It tastes like um, an upscale beer. It's got a really good flavor profile to it. Uh, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to. I'm. I'm gonna have to go eight point three on this. I think. You know you, that does seem right. Like you go to a nice. Like you go to a. I don't know. You're in the. You're like downtown anywhere. You go to like a nice restaurant, maybe like a steakhouse or something, and they got the they got the menu. And it's so nice that they only have like three beers. They have like daily beers, you know? Yeah. And they give you this one. So, yeah, see, you what, I was, th- <laughs> what I, I was thinking was like a nice, like, may- maybe if you're like in town and you're staying at a really nice hotel, like a hotel bar, and me and you, Sean, are down there, we're getting a drink before we go out, right? And we've got I'm sport not very coats nice on. To know. Huh? <laughs> no, what? no, no, but I'm trying to paint the picture I, to him, is what I I'm saying. I want to wear a sport coat, sports coat. Yeah, you know, definitely, coach, you notice that? definitely you could rent them. We'd, we'd, <laughs> we'd love for you to be there. I'm trying to paint a picture I, to Sean, not, not to y'all. <laughs> yeah, well, because he, he was talking about a steakhouse. To me, it's more of a hotel bar. And so we're all okay, down there man. with sports coats on. But we all three could have been there in your, in your example that you're, you're giving. <laughs> yeah, well, then let's all three be there then. Can we go next week? Well, I don't, I don't want to be there just as, as pity now. I don't no. want a pity invite. No, it's not a pity invite. Okay. You're not allowed yeah, so, in public yet. <laughs> yeah, last week, last week, me and Andrew were hanging out with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, and one of them was like, "Oh yeah, your your friend Randall does a podcast. You want to call him?" And we were like, "Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's annoying, bro. You can stay at home." But yeah, that's what it, that's what this beer seems like to me. So eight point three. Okay. Oh man, uh, Randall, you go next. I need to take another drink or something. I need to. Mm. I need to get my senses. Are we just gonna start more. doing the where are you drinking this at the beginning? I whenever I rate, I I, I'm, I do a very bad job with that. That's my bad because whenever I rate it, I kind of paint <laughs> the picture why I rate it. So that's that's on me. You know, I can always hold that I back. Mean, we can. I'm just saying. Number. If we're gonna do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my opinion. You know, I'm gonna do Andrew's it now. Like the Bob or Ross we can wait beer. and do it. I'll you know we can do it again at the end, like we've been doing. Andrew's um, like, all right, guys. So let me paint you a pretty beer picture in your mind. Yeah, so, I don't know who Bob Ross is. No mistakes, is. just happy little You don't know who Bob guys. Ross is? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> Are you serious? Don't, don't judge me, but I have no idea who Bob Ross is. He paints. Like, when VHSs were a thing, you'd buy a Bob Ross VHS, and there'd be paintings on it. <laughs> yeah, like, videos of him Afro. imitating. No, like, so he would paint on the VHS, like he would do the illustration? Or... No, he would paint pictures it would, be, would, video, it would be a movie of him like, painting. He would do. He would paint paintings in thirty minutes, like fantastic. And they would paintings. be beautiful landscape paintings. Dude, I want to see that. 
How come y'all got to see that? I never got to see one of those. I mean, Bro, go to YouTube and Google Bob Ross. All right, well, I'm going to look it up. I, think, the, I think it's actually on, or they used to be on Netflix. His show was on Netflix. Well, I'm going to yeah. watch Bob Ross paint some paintings. Yeah, you give should. him a call. They're, they're amazing. Send him an email. He might write you mm. back. Yeah, you should. <laughs> he definitely didn't die. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Bob Ross. Uh, we'll, for this one, we'll keep it at the end. Maybe we'll we'll talk about um, where we would be drinking it at the beginning next week. Because I want to I want to let the beer set in before I get a full experience of where I would be. You know what I mean? That's I why I like doing it at the end. I like give, having a little bit of a buzz going. <laughs> That's true. Where I would be. I, I, I was gonna say I would say, I was gonna say the initial impression is more accurate, <clears throat> but I think the buzz might help you paint a better picture. So I think that's a good call. Okay. Give a seven point nine. Okay. I uh, think I'm eight. I'll give it an eight. Eight flat. Seven point nine is a little too. A little too this close to eight. Right. Might as well just round up. I think I'm with Andrew. I think I'm going to give it an eight point three as well. I think that's a solid rating. Also, solid reasoning behind it. It's pretty good, but it's not. It's not like screaming at me, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not really screaming at me, me bro. It's I mean, screaming it's not, me. It's not one of my favorite beers, obviously, but it's it's up there. It's good. Um, Maybe if I was to drink one of these in Colorado, it would taste better. No, I would love to drink these all the time. I like it a lot. Oh, well, maybe, maybe you just found a, a solid backup beer to have. Well, you know, it's too expensive for me. Yeah, how much was I didn't even it see. Is. I bought singles mine was, this week. Mine was ten dollars and sixteen cents. That's how much mine was for a six pack for six bottles. Yeah. I would much rather go grab a bunch of Montucky Colt snacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thirty Buy rack food. of Colt snacks. Yeah, exactly. Um all right. Uh what did we wanna What one could say a snack rack. A snack Ooh. rack? Ooh. Right, you gotta be careful. McDonald's gonna come after you for that copyright, brother. <laughs> Um, okay, well, the name of the beer is Fat Tire, but uh, have either of y'all ever gotten a flat tire while you were driving? Yeah, multiple times. A multiple? I have not. Yeah, you never got a flat tire? Uh, well, knock on some wood or something. You know, no, every, every time like my tires need to repla- be replaced, I just go buy a new car. This is like one of those <laughs> things... <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> this is my like one of those things that you talk about the day before it happens. Like, one time... This is totally irrelevant to anything that has to do with the beer. But one time, going into my freshman year of high school, I was spending the night at one of my friend's house, and we were, like, about to go to sleep. And he was like, oh, have you ever broken a bone? And I was like, no, I don't think so. Like, I never broke my arm or anything. And literally the next day at football, I broke my arm. Really? So I, I feel like I'm going to be no, dude, I've never blown a tire out, and I'm going to be driving tomorrow, and it's just going to happen. He said, Oi, dude, have you ever broken your arm? Oi, dude. Oi, Oi, Oi bruv. Like, you ever broken your arm? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, bro. <laughs> yeah, I just knocked on wood. I hope I don't get a flat tire. If I did get a I flat tire. I hope you don't either. If I were to get a flat tire, um, I, I, I learned how to change a flat tire like six years ago, and I imagine I could do it. Uh, I just don't know if I have the tools in my car to do it. Probably not. Really? I used to no. keep all the tools necessary to jack my truck up and change the tires in my truck. I literally have a whole toolbox in the back of my truck because my <laughs> truck has 260,000 miles on it and it's 19 years old. So To be fair, Sean needs a freaking <laughs> <laughs> a welding torch in his truck, dude. Yeah. The, the thing, it just falls apart all the time. In order to like... the passenger door open. <laughs> well, you see, the th- you see the thing about my, uh, like, well, I think two, two or three times it's happened on my commute to college and if anybody is familiar with the commute from anywhere in the houston area to the college of sam houston state university any drive in huntsville is absolutely terrible mm-hmm. and i just bought a fresh set of tires they're brand new and i'm just driving and this dude swerved into me and so i swerved like towards the shoulder and i hit the rubble strips like the brrr, and dude, that was I a really sit- good impression. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. <laughs> and then I get like five five more miles down the road, and then it just <laughs> right right out the back, right out the back of my tire. And I pulled over. And well, the bad thing about a flat tire is when you're truck- tires, that would have pissed yeah. me off. 
The bad thing about a flat tire is when your truck has 260,000 miles on it and the spare tire is 260,000 miles old and it's never been used. And it's just absolutely dry rotted and you can't use it anyways, so you got to go all day without a tire. Yeah. Uh, that sucks. We ride around uh, on the rim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another time was also in... Did you change that tire? Las Vegas. I did, yeah. Also, also, when I got to the spot, like when I pulled in, I pulled into some apartments and I got out of my truck to look at my tire and I locked my keys in the car. Oh, what a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, uh, my truck's, I've had it for so long. I know all the tricks. To when get it rains, it pours. Am I right? Yeah. Another time they were doing construction and literally a concrete stud bolt, like this bolt was 10 inches long. And mm-hmm. literally I ran it over. It flew up into my wheel well and wedged itself between my frame and my tire and literally ripped my tire in half. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You sound like you had bad luck with tires, homie. I do, bro. I remember the time in high school when you were uh, driving to Houston and your wheel just fell off of your truck. Oh, no. I was in Houston. Uh, I had stayed at your house the night before, and we did a little bit of drinking. And... uh, we stayed up till probably four in the morning. This was and, not in high school, correct? Yes. I can or cannot. <laughs> I can I was, neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> yeah. I went to high school in England. I was old enough to drink. Uh, yeah, it's a New Belgium Brewing Company beer. <laughs> went to sleep at 4 a.m. And I had to wake up to drive to Houston at 8 in the morning. Uh, spent all morning in Houston. And then on the way home, I'm leaving the parking garage. Coming down like the spiral <clears throat> parking garage thing. And I guess all the weight was just on one side of my truck, and literally my entire tire just broke off. <laughs> Look, <laughs> my man. tire literally just fell off my truck. Look, man, the Yoda's been through a lot, okay? <laughs> it still works. I still use it every day. Hey, that thing has been through a lot. I, uh, hey, I, li- I, like, to, I like to associate just some, some good relationship advice that I always think about my truck. You know, If your tire breaks on a truck, you just throw it away and go get a new one, or are you going to fix it? You know? Oh, Two hundred sixty thousand miles later, yeah, you know. I can I can drink to that. I think we all. That's should. how I, that's how you that's how you should view your relationship. You know, your wife's leg falls off. You gonna fix it or you gonna go get a new wife? You know, new wife. Get a new wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm joking, Jill. If you ever listen to this podcast, I'm joking. Uh, this beer says it's carbon neutral and also says one percent for the planet. Does that mean like one percent of their profits go back to? I don't know. Maybe. The planet. Well, it says one percent for the planet member, so maybe that's like an organization. Mm. Mm. Well, I was watching a documentary the other day that says you can't, you frankly just can't trust any of the labels. Like they were saying, um, like uh, tuna, dolphin. They call it dolphin safe tuna, where they don't use nets to catch. The yeah, tuna so they don't accidentally catch like the wrong fish or whatever. Yeah, they don't kill the dol. Yeah, so it's got no. Um, what do they call it? Bad catch? I don't know. Something. Dolphin where they catching. kill all these species of fish that they weren't the actual target fish. Correct. Yeah. Well, it said that the do- the the people that certify it as dolphin safe don't hardly ever go out on the boats, and whenever they do, they can get bribed. So they yeah. basically wow. said they basically said that like their logos don't mean anything. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I mean, I mean, you ever seen you ever seen a Wicked Tuna, the TV show? I love Wicked Tuna, bro. Yeah, dude, they be bringing not... in the things. Well, I know they don't catch those with like nets and stuff, but dude, they be bringing those things in. I didn't know how big a tuna was until that's I watched a... that. No, TV no show. that's only bluefin tuna. Yellowfin tuna is a lot smaller. Yeah, that uh, kind of tuna isn't isn't used for the tuna you buy in a can. That that tuna yeah, is like used for tuna, like, like, right. sushi tuna steak, like yeah, high sushi quality sushi. sushi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, spit it out. Keep it worth. Spit it out, brother. <laughs> no, Wicked Tuna is a good show. It's a great show. I went on a huge Wicked wow. Tuna binge back in. What is uh, it? Tr- like Dave Marciano. Uh, which I I remember. I don't know any of their names anymore. It's been a while, but like Dave Marciano was the hard merchandise. The, okay. The old crappy boat with the he had the bald head and he yeah, would yeah, always. Yeah. When he would get pissed off, he'd start just breaking shit on the back of the boat. <laughs> yeah. The one I remember what? the most was the big, the big chunky guy. 
With like oh, the, uh, what's his name? He his is the his boat's the hot tuna. Yeah, but I don't remember his name. And then there was I'm the kid tuna. that was that was part of his crew that tried to break off into Tyler. his own crew. That's Tyler, and it, he just did horrible. Yeah, that's he had Tyler, like one good season, and then the, everything after that, he came in like fifth or sixth on the leaderboard or whatever. Is that yeah. Discovery Channel or was that Nat Geo? Uh, Tyler was the pinwheel. Tyler was the pinwheel of that boat, but I don't yeah, remember. I think it's. I thought it was, was Discovery. Was it? Or... I think it's an. Yeah, it's a Discovery Channel show, I think, right? Because it's, Dis- on, it's on Disney Plus, is how I watch it. That's Nat Geo, then. Didn't the same people that did Wicked Tuna, the same people who did, like, Swamp People? Is that the same people? No. Mm, no. no. Swamp no. People was History Channel. Yeah. Uh, they had a good They had a good run of all those all those shows like that, that category, genre of show. Like, Do you all remember Doug their, Dynasty? Yeah, Dude, like those shows. From like Doug 05 Dynasty. to, like, 015. Yeah. I was thinking about Dark Dynasty a few few days ago, actually, because when I upload our, upload our podcast, it always says, oh, here's other good leisure podcasts, and one of them is Cy Robertson's podcast. He has a podcast? Uh. Yeah. And uh, anyways, I was like, dude, that show, I mean, it ended, like, what, four years ago? They ended it or I something? I wonder Three how many f- listeners he has on his podcast. I don't know. Probably a lot. He's funny as hell because he's senile. Mm-hmm. Is Cy the one that would always say, what was it? He's the old dude I that mean, always drank the sweet tea. He would always say, oh, what was it that he always said? It was that a was one th- That's a fact. Ja- or not, not, no, uh, that's, but Jack. He would always say Jack at the end of something, right? Yeah. Hey, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jack. That's a fact. Jack is our boy from Houston. Yeah. I There is no show of that genre better, and you can't convince me otherwise, than The Crocodile Hunter. The Crocodile Hunter will forever be the best, like, Animal Planet history discovery show. It. You never watched the... Y'all never watched The Crocodile Hunter with Steve Irwin? Mm-hmm. No. Oh, with Steve Irwin? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. Steve Irwin's show, I didn't know it was called The Crocodile... I thought it was The Crocodile Dundee or whatever. No, no that's... that's a, Dundee's different. That's a <laughs> movie, <laughs> completely different. The Crocodile okay. Hunter was the goat, dude. He. I don't know, bro. I really liked Meerkat Manor. Okay, you even putting Steve Irwin in the same category as Meerkat Manor is an absolute joke. To no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, I never wa- I, I like, I watched like two episodes with Steve Irwin, and they were, I oh, loved them. My but God. I watched all the Meerkat Manors, and I loved. So I was just saying a show I loved when I was a kid. For me, there was absolutely there was absolutely nothing better than my dad getting home from work and the TV and the because all we had the only like. TV we had direct TV on or like cable at whatever point in my childhood was our living room TV growing up and I would be watching like Spongebob or some shit which is fine I mean I fucking love Spongebob still do but when my dad got home from work with dinner or we were about to eat dinner he would sit down and change it and always put it on the crocodile hunter dude (laughs) and we're just sitting there watching this guy wrangle crocodiles while we're eating Sonic and it was amazing dude (laughs) I I wanted to ask you this because I've been thinking about this for a while out of seven nights a week, how many nights would you say you eat food not cooked in your home? It depends. <laughs> it depends on the whether I'm dieting or not. If you're not dieting. How many nights a week do I eat food not cooked in my home? Yes. How many times do you eat out? Probably five. Five out of seven really? days? Five out of seven days. And what is, cooked, right. what, what is cooked in your house for those two days? I want Chicken. To... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it depends. Cause Spaghetti? Like, because sometimes, sometimes, like, if my dad cooks, he'll barbecue or, like, grill. Not barbecue. But same thing. But he'll cook, like, burgers or steaks or something uh, or chicken. Uh, if my mom's cooking, she usually makes things in, like, bulk. So it'll be, like, casseroles. Or, oh, dude, I love or casseroles, like spaghetti. Though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Casserole? There's some good casseroles, like some King Ranch chicken. Mm. Oh, yeah, dude. Or, yeah, dude, some of the things that I love the most is when my mom cooks stuff in the crock pot. Oh, yeah, dude. My mom does this thing in the crock pot where she'll... Like Southwest she'll put, chicken or something? Oh, my God. She'll put, no, she'll put chicken in there and stuff the chicken, mm-hmm. right? And then put it in the crock pot and, like, some cream of chicken soup. Yeah. And then you just... Got this like cream cheese stuffed chicken that she pulls out mm-hmm. that's covered and oh my gosh, 
Would you consider chicken spaghetti a casserole? No, that's a spaghetti. Yeah, but Dude, it's cooked I, like a casserole. I've only know? ever had chicken spaghetti. But it is kind of spaghetti. Once when I was like you eight, can also and I cook spaghetti as, the name. A, as a casserole. I guess you could, yeah. It just I want, I want chicken want. spaghetti, and I want it ASAP. Do y'all know where I can get some good chicken spaghetti? Sean's mom. Yeah. Madison well, also makes great chicken spaghetti. Can you tell your mom to make some chicken spaghetti before the weekend so you can bring me some at the cook-off? I'll think about it. You, it's not going to happen, but... <laughs> I'll make it for you. <laughs> chicken spaghetti. You make good shit. I'd be down to eat your shit. No. Oh. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Dude. Making, my Whoa. stomach's working overtime, dude. Whoa. Okay, well. <laughs> anyway, going, going, back to the, going back to Steve Irwin, I just always associate Steve Irwin, Steve Irwin with Keith Urban in my mind. Why? <laughs> because they're both Australian and their names sound similar. Dude, the Keith crazy thing about Keith Urban. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Keith Urban, You well, when he sings a song, you can never tell. Well, that's because the, that's because the part of your brain that sings and the part of your brain that speaks are two different parts. Yeah, but whenever he whenever he interviews, you're like, Jesus, man, this guy has a severe accent that I never knew existed. Dude, I just know because he would always come on the radio and it would start off and be like, Hey, I'm Keith Evan. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm Keith. Ke is this yes, guy? I'm Keith Evan. And if I were to run the new 93Q, I would play more songs <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. I am Keith Evan, and this is my new song, "Blue Ain't Your Color." <laughs> I'm Keith Urban. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Keith Urban. <laughs> no, I'm Keith Urban. <laughs> no, I'm Heath I think, Ledger. Uh, <laughs> I think, isn't I think Nicole Kidman is Keith Urban too? Keith Urban, okay. Australian too. <laughs> his like his wife. Oh man, I would what love to be. I would learn to be. You know, I'd, I'd love to be Keith Urban in. Keith Urban in. What movie is that where they do that? They're like, no, I'm the real. I think uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. No, I'm Dirty Dan. No, I'm Dirty Dan. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it, that's from like a movie though. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't they know what movie, but. Movie. Um, no oh, man, Steve. Wait, we're talking about movie. tires. We're mm -hmm. talking about tires. Flat tires. Yeah, let's get I'm back tired. on topic. I have, I've gotten a you flat a, tire. You ever had a flat tire on the on the chair? No, I haven't. These no? these tires Are they don't made with up. Is there even They're air? Solid okay, rubber. yeah, it's solid rubber. Okay, um, solid rubber. That's bad for the environment. Perfectly balanced <laughs> is all things should be. Okay, you know what else is bad for the environment? Everything. Yeah. So yeah. eat it. Okay. Humans <laughs> are bad for the environment. Um, no, I got a flat tire once uh, in high school, and it wasn't completely flat though. I woke up one morning. It was on a weekend. I know it was on, it was on like a Saturday, I think. I woke up, and I went out to go, probably go to, to Sean's house or something, go somewhere, and my tire was half flat, and I was like, what in the hell? And uh, or, there was a nail. Was it half flat, or was it half full? Half flat, because it had been full. <laughs> uh, so and so, an optimist. No, there's a difference, right? I, look, I'll, I'll, I'll do this right now. <laughs> if you have a full glass of water... And you uh -huh. drink half of it, then it's half empty. <laughs> half full. But if you have an empty glass and you fill it up halfway, then it's half full. Well, as okay, a scientist. Well, how, if, you scientist were to say, if, if your tank's at a half, what would you call it on half your car? Half empty. Half empty, yeah. I if agree you're driving that it. One. If you're filling it up, it's half full. Well, as a scientist, no, I would say that half full to the me, glass though. is never half empty or half full. Half of it's water and the other half is air. So, okay. It's um, full. I got a flat tire in high school. <laughs> um, I hate whenever people say stupid ass shit like that. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I can't stand this shit, dude. <laughs> um, no, but it was because uh, <laughs> my dad had opened his, the back door to his truck and a nail had fallen out. <laughs> and I'm sure a bunch of other things fell out too. Yeah, but the nail went undiscovered and didn't get put back in, and I drove over it, and there was a nail in my tire. Oh, uh, nice. And it had to get patched. Uh, yeah, that was the only time, the, though. However... He picked up the jacks, the extension cord, the uh, the tarp, you yeah. know, the speakers, the yeah. bicycle, everything else that fell out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except the nail. Uh, there was one time where I was driving with my mom. I think we were on our way back from, like, my grandpa's or something. I was, like, 14. 
and um, the we ran over something and the her back. I mean, it sounded like a shotgun went off, dude. We ran over. It was like a board with nails or something, and I mean, it was like boom. And yeah, I mean, it, my mom freaked out and immediately went into the onto the feeder road. Uh huh. And I was I, I like got out and I looked at it and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, the tire's gone. And I started to try to fix it, and she didn't let me fix it because we were on the side of the freeway. Mm. And uh, she immediately went into mom panic mode. Yeah, and luckily, <laughs> my dad was driving home and was able to stop and fix the tire on the side of the road. Dude, nice. there. but that if, was if you, probably if, the scariest thing that happened flat well, tire wise. If, if you ever want some shit like that to happen, just drive in Dallas. There's potholes <laughs> on every road that you hit. Listen, dude. If your tire isn't like a truck tire that's like at least eight inches thick, if you have any sort of car tire, you hit one of these potholes and you just hear, bam, just a loud yeah. Yeah. hitting sound because it. I mean, your whole car is just like hitting. Dude, I've always said this, and I will say this for the rest of my life, that the DFW area is the worst place to drive in the entire United States. Absolutely. It's horrible. It is horrible. Not uh, in the United States. If you've ever driven to Louisiana, it's way worse. Oh, uh, yeah, when you go I've across the waxy Palachahashi Bridge. Yeah, the, the roads immediately just take a shit on themselves. <laughs> I A lot of people obviously in the Houston area complain about Houston roads, which still deserve the complaining they get. But I drove to visit my brother uh, a few times. And every time I went, I had to get my tires realigned when I got back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, like you're talking had, about my axles realigned and my tires rotated. You're talking about so full on blown outs, dude. Uh, hmm. Me, Andrew, Jill and Madison were driving back from Memphis. Oh, and yeah. We're, Dude, and wow. we're driving behind this 18 wheeler, right? And we're like, like, man, what's that smell? And then I think it was Jill. Jill was like, man, it smells like burning tire. Boom! <laughs> and the freaking 18 wheeler in front of his tire just exploded and like shot exploded all over the car. Exploded and just like blew up all over the road. Sean had to like slam on the brakes and cut over in the left lane because this dude's <laughs> tires were hitting us in the face. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. I don't, I, I can't trust 18 wheelers, man. My mom loves no. riding behind them, no matter what. For gas you know what mileage? Like, bro, no, because she's like, ah, they're probably going the speed limit, so I won't speed. That's literally <laughs> her reasoning. Poor logic. Oh, no. <laughs> and people don't cut an 18-wheeler off, typically, so they don't really slam on their brakes. But the thing is, is the ones that she tends to get behind the most are the ones that have the cars on them. And I'm oh, like, God. You and ever I'm seen like, Final Destination? I know, dude. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And I'm They're like, the ones who carry the logs. Yeah. Though, oh, those I will absolutely always tell her to get out from behind those. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That's but a no the ones go. With the cars, I'm like, dude. All it takes is one for that person to make one mistake, tying those cars off, and he hits one bump, he or she, and that thing just <laughs> yeah. freaking. Those cars are coming off, and we're just gonna get. We're gonna drive right into them. My mom was awesome. Yo, ever she would not get anywhere close to those things. Like she would do 140 to pass up an 18 wheeler. Me just to too. Get away from Always, it. I would. Yeah. No matter. Yo, what see the video of the 18 wheeler that's like pulling. You know, like when 18 wheeler has like three 18 wheelers like at an angle behind it, like that it's pulling. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you ever see that video of the guy like with the wife? The wife's just sleep in the uh, passenger he, seat. He pulls yeah, up to the 18 wheeler. Uh -huh. He's like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. wakes up and like loses it. Yeah, I'll tell you great. what, too. You know what I've thought of the past few years uh, is just the fact that we really trust random individuals with our lives every day on the road. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone that you drive by or that drives by you... It sounds like, it sounds like the start of an infomercial. No, <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> but for real, like, you are trusting that person to follow the rules. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of people out there that don't follow the rules of driving. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, that and there's a lot of people that also don't know what the hell they're doing. Like yesterday on my way home from Fort Worth, I had this guy like just like I'm 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 he is is slow in the left lane. I'm passing him in the right lane. He just turns his right blinker on and starts turning into my lane, and I slam on my brakes and lay on my horn. And he's like, he, do you see their window roll down? He's like, sorry. <laughs> but yeah. It's like, I mean, you almost just like killed both of us, man. I hate when people do that. Like anything's acceptable as long as you wave. 
Like, well, just, I agree though. I agree with that statement. They'll just, but they'll just be no. doing like fifty miles an hour and just t-bone you, and they're like, "Sorry, bro, I didn't mean to. See you <laughs> later. I'm on my way to the Keith Urban concert. <laughs> I'm in no. a hurry." No, 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 no. I, so I'm an night. I would say that I partially agree with the statement because a lot of people, the ones that piss me off the most are the ones that do like stupid shit or do something wrong or like you let them pull out in front of you and none of them wave. It's like I just went out of my way to let you in front of me. And you didn't wave. You just went out of your way to drive like shit and you didn't wave. But if someone waves, it's like you're like more forgivable. You don't, you're like, ah, he didn't mean to. It's all right, man. Like, look, you, you, you know wave I mean? at people when you pass somebody on an old country road in a town that only has 15 residents. Okay. That's when you wave at people. When you cut somebody off and you wave, it's like, yeah, you know, go yourself. Well, no, but you can tell if it's like intentional or not. No. If I shot you in the face and then I waved at you, would you think <laughs> that it was an accident? Oi, no, because it was sorry, intentional. Hey, sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, miss ain't it? <laughs> oh, you keep having my, my bad, mate. It was a misfire. <laughs> it's just that you know it works. I'm bro. Keith Evan. I didn't mean to shoot you in the face. <laughs> if someone drives past me on the left going 100 miles, this, this is what upsets me the most, really, about a lot of drivers is when there's a sign two miles before the merge that says left lane ends. And you still have people that drive oh all God, the yes. way up to the merge. And then it causes a traffic jam. And then people have to slam on their brakes because you're trying to merge over. No, no oh it's, even, it's even more because then for a mile, traffic's slowing down, right? We're all going 20 miles an hour because it's a merge. Because you've got all these assholes driving up to the very edge of a merge lane. Yeah. Bro, if anybody's or, familiar. I people do it, like one of our cops got a guy pulled over. And there's traffic backed up, right? And the right lane's empty because there's a cop in it. But then there's just a few assholes, and they're always driving a BMW. And they drive all the way up to the back of the cop and then cut people off. So you, they just cut everyone in line. That's yeah. like trying yeah. to be polite. I can't stand if the you're, cutting If you're line, familiar with dude. the Houston area, as you're coming towards downtown, when you're leaving like, I'm like the Texan Stadium or like Minute Maid Park, you're coming towards downtown and going north on 45. I think it's 288. And it like comes up and it goes like big left turn. Like it's like a big left turn bridge that goes towards downtown. And it comes into two lanes, right? But there's that merge lane that comes all yeah. the way up to the ramp. Mm -hmm. And dude, traffic is always dead stopped. And then this dickhead, the BMW, three lanes of traffic comes on the right, all right? the way to the end and cuts in front of everybody. And people let it's him in. It's a BMW always. Yeah. Am yeah. I right? And then, yeah, and then. Whenever the person trying to cut in line, when you don't let them in, they you lay on their horn and flip you off. Yeah, because that's I've what I get it, out. Because I've legit, <laughs> I've legit not let people in before, and they've almost hit my truck. And yeah. I'm like, bro, I, up, I think the solution for this is to like bring the a paintball gun, and you oh. roll down the, the back <laughs> window. You set that paintball gun on your car and just lace the side of their car. <laughs> I think I think a good solution would to be lay a spike a spike trap down on the line. Okay, that sounds dangerous. I think you just fill up fill up a doggy bag full of dog shit and throw it out the car window every time you drive past you. <laughs> but that's a felony. The, the <laughs> law, windows you, roll down. You can't just have a cop out there throwing dog dookie on people's doors. No, not the cop. Me. <laughs> no, I know, but then that's a felony. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. You it's only a crime if you get caught, dude. They don't know whose dog that came from. I can't stand it. I'm just like, <laughs> if everybody if everybody would wait in you line like DNA, they're supposed you to. You want to DNA test my dog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sir, we had uh, reports that this license plate number, uh, <laughs> the, the, the person that this license plate number belonged to threw a bag of dog dookie out their window on this person's. That's not true. I don't Come even on. have a dog. We need to <laughs> test and see if your dog, uh, your dog's this fecal matter large cat. matches this dog. I don't even have a dog. In the background, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that just made me think of bench warmers. Is it a dog or <laughs> is it a dog or a cat? And he goes, I think it's a goat. Oh yeah. <laughs> is it? Oh, it is bench warmers. Yeah. Where does he grab it from? Oh, it's whenever they're... they're it's on his dog. face. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a goat. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Have y'all ever got a hard one for you, number seven? I'll have a turkey on one. <laughs> Bro, the bench warmers, I haven't seen the bench warmers in years. I, don't <laughs> I need to rewatch that. It's a good movie. Oh my God. Get, uh, so, talking some more about this beer, it says New Belgium. I guess that's the brewing company, right? Yeah, New Belgium Brewing. Have you ever been to Old Belgium? Well, is that like a, is that like an actual place? You think New yes. Belgium is like actually a town like New Hampshire or like New York? No, it's it's the new state of Old Belgium. But it's obviously not a state. No, not a state in the United States. I, I just meant like, you know, whenever they say the, the state of the union, it's like, like that. It's, it's not okay. Old Belgium. It's. New Belgium. So they they intentionally made the name New Belgium just so that you could confuse me. Is that what you're saying? I don't know how what I said is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a town or what. It's probably worth a Google. I'm gonna go get another flat tire real quick. I'll be right back. You should probably go get that patched. Oh, dude, you know what? If this beer sits for long enough, it becomes <laughs> a flat tire. Wow. Uh, I don't think there actually is a New Belgium. I looked it up and it. I looked up New Belgium and it literally just pulled up New Belgium Brewing Company. Where the heck is Belgium? I don't know. So, oh, Belgium's one country south of the Netherlands. Yeah, you didn't know that. It's it's sandwiched in between Germany, the Netherlands. It's near and Germany. I knew it was near no, Germany. No, 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 no. New Belgium. Is located just south of the Netherlands. Uh, New oh. Belgium isn't really a place. It's just. I know it's not. I'm joking. Hey guys, this is one of my favorite beers I've ever had. Okay, Are you sure. You think so? Yeah, I really like it a lot. It's like I knew it was good when I tried it, but it's. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, the only thing that I think of whenever I I hear Belgium, is, the one scene from Austin Powers. Where Doctor Evil? Yeah, never seen it. I know Andrew. Uh, I know. Uh, the just, one you just see me lean in, and you already know it's going. Yeah. Uh, there's one scene though where he he's drinking a cup of Starbucks, and he gets whipped cream on his must like on up his, his upper lip when he drinks it, and they're they're trying to tell him to wipe it off without being rude, and he goes, "Oh, I know, I did it. It's it's called the Belgium Dip." That's the only yeah. thing. I, that's the only thing that comes to my mind when I think of Belgium. Everybody drinks. Everybody drinks. All right. Thank God Randall does it. Sean never does it. Every time he's the brewmaster, I think he's the world's worst brewmaster. I don't think you could have a brewmaster and it not be worse than Sean. You know what I think? Well, I think I have that... a one in three chance of being the worst. So I also have a one in three chance of being the best. So no, you don't because you're the worst every time. I think I'm the best because I've been at the most times. So it's it's hard to it's easy to look upon somebody that does something all the time when you've only done it once yourself. So. Well, yeah, yeah, but if you no, actually, I did it three times in a row, so keep count. Um, but also, I think, you know, if you do it the most, but you do it the worst, I think it brings the level of the podcast down. So you need to step up your game. You know what I mean? Well, I'm like Mark Zuckerberg. You know, I may not be. I may be. You no, know, Mark CEO Zuckerberg ever. does it the best. That's why he right. he did I it better the than the done. twins yeah. or whatever. And made a billion dollars i get the job done i think also you know what this made me think of in this glass bottle hmm. really off topic but you ever you ever went to take a drink and just smash the rim of the glass bottle into your front tooth? yes seat? yes yeah oh my god and have you ever like sucked. have you ever smashed your your lip where it felt like you busted your lip with it yeah mm-hmm. done that, yeah, too. that is the worst oh oh god now you got me thinking about ripping your lip dude Whenever, like, oh you got gosh. some dead skin, you got some dead skin hanging off your lip, and you bite it and just Dude. rips like an inch Oh, because you, you're trying to get just a little oh, bit, but it keeps yeah. tearing, and you're the whole time, you're like, ah, 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 ah. And then yeah. at the end, it's burning for like three days. It's and, you, and then you have like a lemonade. Your whole mouth tastes like lead. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> um, I think that the, the brewmaster thing that we do here on the podcast, I think I'm going to start implementing this in my real life. I think that I think that wherever I go with somebody or some people, we're gonna come up with some kind of competition to decide who's the brewmaster. And at any point during the rest of the day, they get to tell us when to drink. Well, one of the first times I ever I ever got drunk, right, was with you guys, if you recall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. And 
there wasn't any sort of competition. I got there and was told I was the beer bitch. No, <laughs> we were playing presidents and assholes. No. Yes. Yeah, we were. We did, we, were. we did play it. We did play it. But as soon as I got there, I was like, beer bitch. Sounds well, like some we, in, we initiated. Everyone pointed the finger way, yes. and said, beer bitch. Did you draw <laughs> a card said. before we called you the beer bitch? Huh? Did you draw a card before we called you that? No. We, well, we, I remember we doing that because we, so because the reason why I'm saying, the reason why I'm saying that, the reason why I'm saying that story is because I want everyone to understand that I'm not losing it when I say these guys are mean to me. Okay. I'm just, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm the third guy in the podcast. This it's a podcast. It, it, it's a podcast of two that I join in every week. That was an initiation tactic, bro. That's we're inviting you into the group to become one of the boys. And all yeah, we're saying it's is hazing. That, yeah, yeah, well, people die hazing. in hazing, okay? <laughs> okay? Hazing is not Andrew, a joke, hey, Andrew. You know, well. <laughs> hazing is a subculture that should not be accepted. <laughs> no, hey, I'm Andrew, joking. did you have fun I'm that joking. night? Did you have fun? Well, I had a blast. And hazing is absolutely necessary. Join any baseball team ever. Absolutely. 100%. Oh. Hazing is wrong. Shut up, dude. <laughs> hazing is wrong at a certain extent. But if it's just fun in games, it's only yeah. wrong if someone dies. Let's be honest. Yeah, if, if it's there's like other ways, it's wrong. Well, yes, it's only it's only wrong if a crime is committed. What exactly. That? Yeah. If someone gets I hurt. agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Well, you know what else is a crime? What's that? Not like Andrew. Not having seen in Bob Ross. Or Austin Powers. Or it's a okay. bunch of other. Things. If you it's don't okay. like, I, if you never, don't like Andrew, cycling. You don't like cycling. That that is a crime. Also, I just want to throw something out there. Something that I'll, I'm going to give Andrew something to to rag on me on, you know. And since he's never seen Bob Ross or like some other movies, you know, I've never been to a Kenny Chesney concert. Ooh. So he can you rag on people me. People haven't been to Kenny Chesney concerts, bro. You know what I think I, is a crime? If you don't like and retweet the tweet of this podcast. Release. That's true. I think that's a crime. It's actually at the 31st Amendment. I think it's actually punishable with a 10 year, um, up to yeah. 10 years in in prison or up to a $25,000 fine. I just checked my watch and that's true. If you don't mm -hmm. retweet it, then you have to have a meet and greet with Andrew. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. All right. This yeah. is turning Y'all go ahead and do the sign off. I'm going to go ahead and log out of this call. Good talking to you guys. <laughs> Anyways, we were talking about cycling. Oh, dude. Me and you used to go cycling all the time. Or not cycling. We would get, ride bikes after school all the time, dude. You can't call it cy cycling when you're on a Walmart bike. You know, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like it doesn't become cycling until you spend some money on it. I think it doesn't become cycling until you're wearing the helmet with the point on the back. <laughs> exactly. And skin-tight clothing. Then it's cycling. It's not considered cycling until you have done a lot of uh, performance enhancing drugs and lose a testicle. That's when it's considered cycling. True, true. Andrew, did you ever ride bikes around the neighborhood growing up? Hmm? Did you ever ride bikes <laughs> around the neighborhood growing up? No, I rode my ripstick, homie. No, I I'm just kidding. Whenever I, had a, whenever I had a bike, bro, the best bike to have was one of them ones with the pegs on the front and back, and you'd have mm. two of your homies on the bike with you. Hell and you're yeah. just and struggling to keep each that, other. You're just yeah, you're going like two miles an hour and you're struggling to keep that thing straight. Yeah. But you're yeah. getting to your third homie's house, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm, so y'all can peg him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. You're going to your pick up your fourth See, homie. See, that is unacceptable hazing. Unless he's Did into it. it. <laughs> I've always thought it was weird how how the the person on the front has to ride on the pegs. Because it's not acceptable when, when they're facing you. Also, you know? you, no, but they ride with their butt on the. That's what makes it hard to steer. I know. That's what I makes know. It hard to steer. Did someone ever rip a fart when you were doing that? No, not for it me. It's gone Thank with the God. wind, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you just ride on past it, man. <laughs> you only get a quick whiff. That's it. It's just, it's, you, but you you're building. You're building those calves up, dude. I had some. What, come summertime when we were out of school and I was biking everyone around on them pegs. When I was pegging everybody. 
<laughs> I had some gas. <laughs> See, <laughs> sorry. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> but I was gonna say, like, oh, see, shit. like the the guy on the back pegs, the, <laughs> the guy that's getting pegged on the back, like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like a <laughs> it's like a mutual bond type of thing, you know? Like he's standing on the back pegs and he's like leaned up. He's got he's facing the same direction as the bike is going, you know? His hands, like his hands, he or she, it doesn't have to be a dude. Oh, he's got you on the back. He gives you a hug, you know? Because you can yeah, he's got his on. hands on your shoulders, you know? You're like riding like boys on a tandem tandem horse, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> if that's a tandem real. horse <laughs> so he's just got great example i think that i think that's really a good example but the but the dude on the front just has his ass in your face and he's just the guy on the front pegs yeah it just makes like, everything awkward that's half of his guy foot's hanging off has to ride around, turn around and ride with his front facing you so you can make complete eye contact <laughs> the whole time did you ever did dude, you ever if, he, you, if he was facing you the him. two dudes the dudes on the front peg and the dude on the back pegs are definitely hitting you with an Eiffel Tower. Well, did you ever get? Did you ever get <laughs> when you were getting pegged? Did you ever like turn and then the the tire rubs your your calf? Did that no. ever happen to either of you guys? I never participated Probably. in pegging. It, you get like a rubber burn on your calf. That happens when you mm-hmm. peg. Yeah, it does. You do get rubber burns. Yeah. I I don't think I ever. I never had a bike with pegs on it or had a friend with bike with pegs on it that we i never had enough friends to ride with two people on a bike dude we should have a shirt that says (laughs) (laughs) i enjoy pegging with a bike with pegs on it yeah Yeah. that or i've pegged people (laughs) (laughs) i need it i need it um no most of the bikes i had were like mountain bikes they were never like uh, I guess you would call them like street bikes or whatever, like that style. It would be the ones where I could shift gear right oh, I wanted to, you know? Felt the like second I, I got one of those, car. I felt like a badass. Bro, there was one time where I was riding down my street with the the uh, kid, one of my neighbors, one of their kids, and um, we we rode all the way down my street, which it, <laughs> if you've been down my street, it's like a good two miles it's quite probably. a ways dude it's yeah we probably rode, longer than that we rode all the way down there and turned around and came all the way back and on our way back these two pit bulls ran out of someone's yard and started chasing us and barking at us dude and i hit my <laughs> mountain bike into the next gear and fucking burnt off and left the kid the other kid behind me bro <laughs> i burnt off and i got all the way back home and waited in my driveway <laughs> and he came he, i watched him come around the like the corner like the not a corner but a turn on my road coming up mm-hmm. a hill and i was like oh my god he made it oh thank god dude you don't you know have the... to be faster than the pit bull you, just you, just got to be yeah. you know the worst thing too is like you'd be riding through somebody's neighborhood you know your friend's neighborhood on your bike and there were some dogs that start chasing you and you're the dude that has the bike that just so happens to like so when a dog starts chasing you right you don't maintain seating position right you stand no, you up stand up and you put it in full gear right and you but, start, you but start, chain, but when, on. when the dog, the dog starts chasing you, you stand up and you take that first push down and you just hear tink and, and the, the chain, chain pops, pops off. Yeah. Bro. Uh, Hell yeah. Then oh, you beat man. the shit out of the dog with the bike and get charges pressed against you. <laughs> okay, Michael Vick, calm down. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we, dude, I have so, I, I, I loved biking though, dude. I would a hundred percent. Like if I was able to, and I lived close enough to my job, I would bike to my job. Every day. I mean, I oh my god, that sounds awful. <laughs> I loved it, dude. I mean, legit. Like I said, we would get home from school, nah. like we'd get to my house from school, and just hop on the bikes and go ride for like two hours, dude. I would bird. I would bird to work if I could. You'd ride a bird scooter. Yeah, like if I could own a bird and bird you to can. work, or I mean, I would love to like buy like a really nice motorcycle and like go in. You know, but not like a Harley, like a kind of like a pro. You know, it was always funny. Dude, to me? You, I don't remember this girl's city, name, I'm but not in against high mopeds. School... Dude, there was that <laughs> one girl in high school that had a moped. Do y'all remember her? Uh, someone in a moped in our high school. I don't, yeah, I don't remember her. Like, I don't remember what she looked like really or her name, but she legit, That's... she, she had a moped, bro. I let. <laughs> Badass, dude. I wish I could. I wish I could have dated that girl, so that way I could have been the guy riding around Willis in a moped. 
<laughs> no, absolutely not. It's the most uncool thing unless you live in a city. When you live in the country, bro, a moped makes absolutely That's no the point, sense. though. You're the only moped. That's what would have been fun. Spent, bro, if you, you would have had a moped, Andrew, like... I want you to know if you would have had a moped, we would have loaded your moped up in the back of one of our trucks and fucking burnt off with it. I would have been, I would have been hazed. Yeah, one hundred percent. You would have. You know what's funny? I, especially I wonder, baseball. You, was it Jill? Trucks. You ever been pegging on no, a moped? Was it Jill? It was a girl in our class. Because because <clears throat> they had a moped in their garage. It, the girl I remember was like not a full Jill, size moped. <clears throat> they make full size mopeds. Like a hundred miles to the gallon moped. Hundred miles to the gallon. <laughs> Dang. I don't think my legs get 100 miles to the gallon, dog. <laughs> yeah, well, this moped did. Look, talk, so talking about riding bikes on Randall Street, I think it's longer than two miles, but you really, it's one of those things you can't put into, uh, like, units, like like real-life units. Like, it's no experience. one really knows how many miles it was. I just know that the amount of time we rode full speed to the end of the road and back was listening to the rehab Eminem album three times in a <laughs> row <laughs> until we got back for real. And we wouldn't stop, dude. We would roll and roll and roll. And eventually we found a cut through to another neighborhood that was behind like my street. <laughs> yeah, we did. And so we would ride all the way down my street to the cut through and then ride all throughout that neighborhood and go back through the cut through and ride back to my house. We would literally get home at like what? Three forty five, four o'clock mm-hmm. and ride bikes until like seven thirty at night. Yeah, that's before we discovered video games. <clears throat> that's also before I could drive. It was. As soon as I could drive, we no longer did that. Yeah. That was, that was a fun time. At least not yeah. regularly. I still rode, I still went and rode bikes every now and then. But the, also the one time, do you remember that one time when we were at uh, Scott's house in the Woodlands? Yeah. And it was like, dude, we were all, we were all drinking and hanging out and, uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning, bro. And I, we had our, me and Sean had already been kind of sober enough because we had to drive home. And, uh, I did not condone drinking and driving, nor do I participate in it. No. And, uh, so we had been like drinking water and stuff and sobering up and eating and stuff. And it was like two o'clock. And I was like, dude, let's go, let's go ride bikes. <clears throat> we loaded up on some bikes and rode out to the woodlands in the middle of the night. At two o'clock in the morning, we rode to the Woodlands Mall to that Marriott right there by the Woodlands Mall, kind of. And there was a wedding going on, dude. Like a wedding ceremony. And we went, we got off our bike, left our bikes outside and went in to the wedding. And these people invited us into their wedding and let us dance with the freaking bride. What? We danced with everybody. And then finally, some people came and kicked us out. Dude, that's crazy. But like the groom and, and bride and like groomsmen, all that, they were all so plastered. They were like, yo, what's up, guy? We were like in t shirts, sweating. No, but hold on. Where, hold on. Where did Literally, you ride the bikes from? Uh, it was probably like a mile and a half away. It wasn't that far away. I, I, mi- I, I think I missed the beginning of the story because I was trying to adjust like my life. You rode him all the way from Randall's house. That's what I thought you were saying. <laughs> yeah. And I was no. like, Oh my god. <laughs> no, we rode pr- when we uh, walked in, they probably thought Friends that I was Vince Vaughn and Randall was Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Facts. That's true. Yeah. I still I'm pretty sure I still had my hair at that point. My long hair. I want to address that I have hair. <laughs> I just mean I had I had longer hair back then. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember that night vividly though. I I because Nate because Nathaniel went with us and, you know, Nathaniel hadn't been sobering up. So we were watching him. And uh, Man, I hope this isn't incriminating. No, no well, one else shouldn't. I'm not even getting real. I, I also think that someone just tombstone somebody else in my upstairs apartment. <laughs> I didn't hear RKO. That was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's super loud. We're fine. Mm. You want me to go knock on the door and tell him we're trying to record a podcast? Uh, yeah, I didn't well, hear it. You Did don't have to do that much longer because it's about that time to end it. Is it? As yep. unfortunate as it is. It is. Uh, it's final rating time. How are we feeling? Or actually, we, well, we can do, uh, where are you drinking at real quick? You all stay in, uh, um, in, that, in that area? 
Mm-hmm. I'm staying where I was. <clears throat> hmm. I think I was pretty pretty J- spot on for me. Just for the record, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna agree. It's to me, it's definitely like this is this is what happened is I have had to travel for work. Okay. I'm like a let's say I'm a sales rep or something, and I've traveled to uh, I, anywhere really. Let's just Chicago. Say. Sure, yeah. Travel to Chicago, and it's just like really late at night. And I get to my hotel, and the bar's open. The you know the waiter, the or the the bartender, or whatever is what I mean. Bartender is just like you know wiping glasses with his rag, you know. Yeah. And I Classic. walk over to the bar, and I'm like, hey man, what you know? What do y'all got? And he lists off a couple, and I'm like, ah, let me let me get that hey, fat yeah, tire. Yeah, we got bro. this uh, fat tire. You want to try it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, give it to me, buddy. <laughs> and so I take it. And uh, I take a drink and I go, man, this is delicious. And I turn around and the love of my life is sitting at a table over there. Oh, yeah. And you got to you got to muster up the courage. All, yeah. I, need, all mm-hmm. I need is this beer, though. I literally just, I walk over there and I set it down on the table and I go. What's up? Especially the beer, because it's like, look back at you and I'm like, it's yeah. just calming your nerves. You're not getting too crazy. <laughs> it's Sean. <laughs> Sean was just like. Yo, dude, you want to go play some games? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it, that's definitely the vibe I get, though, for sure. Not, not just, uh, I don't know, like the can or, or bottle or whatever, and flavor, all of it. I get that vibe for sure. I think y'all hit that pretty spot on, honestly. It definitely seems like a weird town that you would drink this in, though. Like, well, not a weird town. It's, it's a like weird a town. To this. It's like a small town, but with a nice hotel. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's not like you're not in like downtown Chicago, but you're like a a city close close to Chicago. Like not Dallas, but you're in Fort Worth. Kind of. Yeah. More like it'd be more like Denton. Like I roll up to Denton. Okay. Well, I disagree with that. And there's like, well, I mean. I'm not saying Denton specifically. I'm just saying like not a lot of people know about Denton. It's just a small city outside of Dallas. You know, many, where many people know Fort Worth. Yeah, you just roll up to Ellicottville, New York, and you sit down at the bar and you drink. Did you you a nice say Ella Deville? I would drink this in Ellicottville, but I would all I would Ellicottville. probably have before that. I would have the other one there that we have yet to do on this podcast. Absolutely, you find it, we do it. I will. I will search this entire earth. Well, I only have to search in one place, but you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll lead off the final ratings. I think I'm going to leave it at an 8.3. I think it's, it's a very solid beer though. This it's almost like, I wouldn't say it's exactly what I, what I think of when I think of just like the general word beer, but it's very close, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's really like, good when it's, when it's called a fat tire and I like saw it in the store, I was really expecting it to be an IPA, you know, or really? something like you that. Were... I, I just want to, every time you say it, I just want to be like, it's a f- fat tire, bro. Fat tire. P-H-A-T-T. <laughs> yeah. That tire's fat, dog. Dude, it's a fat. <laughs> <clears throat> like, you know, like when you say fat bet, you know, like kind of like yeah. that. Like when you're younger, you say "fat bet." That's how I think of this beer. <laughs> no, but I agree with you perfectly, Randall. And that right there, describing this beer as a beer that I think of when I think of beer, is going to make me raise my rating to a nine point five. Wow! Really? Mm-hmm. Whoa! Man, I'm telling you, I love this beer. Out. I'm telling you, I love this beer, and I think if someone were to get a six-pack of this, they would rate it the exact same way. They would have their first beer, and by the time they got to the end of that six-pack, they'd say, this is one of my favorite beers. Wow. I also think it's very good. And I also agree, I probably rated it a little bit low at the start. Uh, I'll split the difference with an 8.8. Close enough. No, Y'all just no. threw me under the bus on that one. 8.6. 8. No, this, this beer is fantastic. I love this beer. It's actually really good. Uh, 
I was going to say 8.8, .8, but it's not a twist stop. So, and I don't carry a bottle opener around with me all the time. So, it's I'm going to lose this point two points for that. Mm, good fact. That's a valid point. Good that is a valid point. But good I have rating, a bottle rating, opener on me at all times. So, wow. Who wears their class ring all the time? Uh, it's a tradition at AM. So, that's. that's <laughs> all right. Well, it's that time of the podcast where we tell you to follow us on socials, which. Pretty much everywhere, including Instagram, Facebook, um, Patreon is all at Off The Tap Podcast. And the Twitter is at Off The Tap Pod. Twitter's probably the best place to get in contact with us. Uh, that's where we're most active and everything. But <clears throat> other than that, does anyone have a really good Australian accent for the outro? Oi! I'm Keith Evan. If you ain't getting dirty. You ain't getting far enough, mate. Can you peg on a moped? <laughs>